Hello everybody and welcome to video number 35 of the online version of the Fusion Research Lecture. We are in chapter 6, Turbulent Transport, and you might remember that in the last video we talked about, uh, actually we talked about the turbulent transport, and in this video we will talk about turbulence measurements, as this is a very important topic in fusion. So, turbulence, turbulence measurements is the topic of this video, turbulence measurement, or measurement, and this is actually a field of active research. This is a field of active or very active uh, research. And um, just uh, to give a bit of an historical introduction, we come to the picture on the right in a, in a minute. The first um, proper turbulence measurements were conducted not before the 1980s, so really uh, rather late. So the first proper turbulence measurements uh, oops, um, measurements sorry, measurements um, were performed in the 1980s in small tokamaks And what was found was basically a broadband turbulence spectra. So a broadband turbulence spectra was found, meaning that we have uh, components with different size over a large range of sizes being present in a plasma. And it was also clear then that the turbulence was responsible for the observed transport. So turbulence uh, is responsible for the observed transport. And the picture on the right hand side actually is uh, is a spectra of um, turbulent density and potential fluctuation. This is a spectra measured in the TJK stellarator. And uh, you can here nicely see in this spectra how the how the dual how a dual cascade is found. So what was basically uh, what I said will is going to happen for a two-dimensional turbulent system that we have a dual cascade, that we have here the inverse energy cascade here. And that here we have the direct enthalpy cascade with uh, with different um, 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 slopes. And this is actually a measurement. So this was found. This was measured with uh, Langmuir probes in the in a TJK stellarator and a low temperature stellarator. Um, so this is a nice um, example where the experiment, a nice example for a low temperature device being able to reproduce what was predicted by by the theoretical expectations. Um, the density fluctuations, coming back to the measurements, the density fluctuations are up to a few 10%. So the density um, variations, they are up to, uh, it can be even up to a few 10% at the plasma boundary, um, up to a few percent more in the plasma center. So it really depends where you are, but the density, the amplitude of the variations can be really large. And um, you might have seen that already in the picture, the Boltzmann relation is fulfilled. So um, the Boltzmann relation is fulfilled and the Boltzmann relation basically says that the density, the normalized density variations is approximately given or approximately equal to the normalized potential variation. And this is what is also called that there is an adiabatic response. Yeah, so this is um, also called an adiabatic response. 
Okay, another example or another um, or important result is, and uh, we already had that in, I think it was the last video, that the amplitude of the density uh, fluctuations scale basically with the gradient of the plasma, which is not surprising, and the size of the uh, density structure, the size of the vortices, where Ln here is um, the inverse gradient length, over and not. Um, and this corresponds to the so-called mixing length model. So this is corresponding to the mixing length model and the universality of that law so that the fluctuation amplitude scales inversely with the gradient. Um, this is shown in the graph on the right hand side where you can see here the amplitude of the density variations uh, fluctuations as a function of the inverse structure size or of the product of the size of the structures times the inverse density gradient length sorry and you can see how uh, there is a number a variety of experiments being around uh, being um, arranged around that uh, line of uh, slope one here. Uh, we have stellarators and tokamaks there. So this really, and, and uh, spanning like three orders of magnitude. So this is really um, a universal um, um, law. So in addition, it was found that turbulent structures are strongly elongated along the magnetic field line. So it was found that turbulent structures are strongly elongated along the magnetic field. This was found uh, or can be made visible, for example, when you make a gas, a gas puff at the edge and then look at the uh, resulting H alpha emission. That is a typical experiment for that. So doing a gas puff at the edge and then looking at the H alpha emission. Um, what does that mean? This means that the perpendicular structure size is usually on the order of centimeters, whereas the parallel structure size is usually on the order of meters. Yeah, so strongly elongated uh, along the magnetic field line. Now, a very useful tool for turbulence measurements are Langmuir probes. Um, but Langmuir probes can only be used in low temperature devices. So Langmuir probes can only be used in low temperature devices. Or, um, when, or when you take extremely care only in the very edge of hot fusion plasmas, when you like have very fast reciprocating recipro probes that might also be possible but in principle only in low temperature devices and this is why these low temperature devices are often which uh, these, these are also often re referred to as wind tunnel experiments wind tunnel experiments where you have a reduced set of plasma parameters reduced set of plasma parameters, for example, the density being reduced by a factor of 100 and by reduced, I mean, as compared to a fusion, to an actual fusion plasma, the temperature being reduced by a factor of 10, where the factor of 10 here refers to the edge of the fusion plasma. Um, so yeah, so the edge of the fusion plasma, the magnetic field um, being reduced by a factor of uh, 30 or something like that. Despite the reduced set of plasma parameters, there are some similar dimensionless parameters. So there are some similar dimensionless parameters. And these are, for example, the, the plasma beta, which can be approximated um, the no dimensionless parameter by n times uh, the temperature, so the plasma pressure over the squared magnetic field. 
and also the uh, nu, which is uh, here given by the density over the temperature to the power of three half. Um, then the characteristic scales, uh, these are usually somewhat larger. So the character, characteristic or some characteristic scales are often somewhat larger. And an important characteristic here to describe the turbulence is rho s, rho s, which is the sound speed well, the sound speed CS over the ion cyclotron frequency corresponding approximately to the electron temperature or the square root of the electron temperature over the magnetic field, defining roughly the size of the turbulent structures. Um, and the advantage of Langmuir probes is that they offer very good spatial and temporal resolution. So this is the big advantage of Langmuir probes. So Langmuir probes offer very good spatial and temporal resolution, which is good from an experimentalist point of view. And is also good if you want to compare something with codes compare with codes because then you can use basically these kind of tabletop experiments to benchmark your numerical codes which you can then use to make more solid predictions or descriptions for an actual fusion device. An example for Langmuir probes here are Langmuir probe arrays in the Stellarator TJK. Again, an example here are Langmuir probes. And these are actually Langmuir probe arrays. So Langmuir probe arrays in the Stellarator TJK located in Stuttgart. And on the left hand side, you can see um, these, these here are the probe tips. And the probe tips are arranged on one flux surface with a spatial resolution here of approximately 0.7 centimeters. And here you have them arranged in a, in a matrix, basically in a matrix order with a spatial resolution of one centimeter. And as you might know, Langmuir probes, these are just electrostatic tips. So here, uh, as it's written here, tungsten tips, here tungsten tips, and then ceramic tubes. And um, at TJK, there is a data acquisition system, for example, used which allows to acquire 128 channels, so 128 probes simultaneously with a bit of a resolution of 16 bit and a sampling rate of 1 megahertz, so microsecond time resolution. So that is the sampling rate. And that is a very nice system to describe turbulence, both in good temporal and spatial resolutions. And such probe arrays allow to measure the poloidal structure of transport, for example. So such probe arrays allow, for example, to measure poloidal structure of transport, poloidal structure of transport. And you can see here a drawing. So in uh, the center, this is a poloidal cross section. This is a poloidal cross section of a plasma. Here you can see the vessel wall. And you might remember from the interchange instability, as depicted in these two drawings on the right and on the left hand side, that the interchange instability uh, gets unstable on the low field side and is stabilized on the high field side. Meaning if we put such a probe array to, uh, to this cross section, 
then we should be able to see uh, this kind of asymmetry, meaning that we would expect more transport on the low field side than on the high field side. And this is actually what we see here. So here you can see the transport as a function of the poloidal angle, um, where we have here the low field side where the maximum is located, then here the high field side where the minima are located, meaning that this nicely shows that the transport is higher on the low field side. So this nicely shows that the transport is higher on the low field side. So this is a very nice um, um, experiment. Okay, now how is uh, the measurement of plasma density turbulence actually performed in fusion experiment? So the plasma density uh, variation um, measurement in fusion experiments. We have, for example, a beam emission spectroscopy. We have, for example, beam emission spectroscopy. In beam emission spectroscopy, we inject neutrals and then measure the light emitted from these neutrals. And the intensity variation then reflect the local density um, fluctuation strengths. Okay, so you inject some kind of neutrals, measure the light emitted by them, and measure them very precisely such that you can deduce from the intensity variation something to the local density fluctuation. Then we have uh, reflectometry. Reflectometry. You might know standard reflectometry, which you can use to measure the profile of your plasma density. But when you have Doppler reflectometry, you actually measure the backscattered microwave, the microwave which is backscattered on density variation. And if this is Doppler shifted, then from this Doppler shift, you can reconstruct from measuring the K component, the density fluctuation. So it's basically Doppler reflectometry. Then there is also laser scattering. Laser scattering, so measuring the light being scattered by small scale density variation and due to the short wavelengths of the laser, this is more sensitive to very small density structures. Yeah? So these are just a few examples. And a very important comment is also to be aware of that magnetic, so far we talked about electrostatic turbulence and um, magnetic field uh, fluctuations has been measured. So it is poss possible to measure that, but no clear evidence has been found that this contributes significantly to the overall transport. So the magnetic field, uh, uh, magnetic field variation of fluctuation has been measured, but there is no clear evidence that they contribute significantly significantly to the overall, to the global transport. Okay, that's it for this video, which was a brief overview about turbulence measurement. Remember, this is a field of active research. I showed you an example for a dual cascade, actually measured uh, in a TJK accelerator. Um, we talked about the strength of uh, the density variation, the density fluctuation being up to a few 10% at the plasma boundary. Then uh, I briefly talked about the mixing length model, where the density, which says that the density fluctuation amplitude scales with the size uh, of the density structure, so with the size of the vortices, and inversely with the size of the gradient, which is uh, kind of expected. And the turbulent structures are strongly elongated along the magnetic field line. And that Langmuir probes can be very useful, but only be used in low temperature devices. In fusion, you have to use, as outlined here on this slide, for example, beam emission spectroscopy, Doppler reflectometry, or laser scattering. And that magnetic field variations or fluctuations have been measured, but there's no clear evidence that they contribute significantly to the overall transport. Okay, that's it for this video. Hope to see you in the next video.